Robert Sylvester Kelly, born January 8, 1967, is an American singer, songwriter, record producer, and former semi-professional basketball player. He is credited for helping redefine R&Amp, B and Hip Hop, earning the nicknames King of R&Amp, B and King of Pop Soul. A native of Chicago, Kelly began street performing during the late 1980s and debuted in 1992 with the group Public Announcement. In 1993, Kelly went solo with the album 12 Play. Kelly is known for various songs including I Believe I Can Fly, Bump and Grind, Your Body's Callan, Gotham City, Ignition, Remix, If I Could Turn Back the Hands of Time, The World's Greatest, I'm a Flirt, Remix, and The Hip Hopera Trapped in the Closet. In 1998, Kelly won three Grammy Awards for I Believe I Can Fly. Although Kelly is primarily a singer-songwriter, he has written, produced, and remixed songs, singles and albums for many artists. In 1996, he was nominated for a Grammy Award for writing Michael Jackson's song You Are Not Alone. In 2002 and 2004, Kelly released collaboration albums with rapper Jay-Z and has been a featured vocalist for other hip-hop artists including NAS, Sean Combs, and The Notorious B.I.G. As of 2019, Kelly has released 12 solo studio albums, and sold over 75 million records worldwide, making him the most successful R&Amp, female artist of the 1990s and one of the world's best-selling music artists. He is the 55th best-selling music artist in the United States, with over 32 million domestic album sales. Kelly is listed by Billboard as the most successful R&Amp. B slash hip hop artist of the years 1985 to 2010 and the most successful R and Amp B artist in history. He has won awards including Grammy Awards, Bet Awards, Soul Train Music Awards, Billboard Music Award S, and AACP Image Awards, and American Music Awards. Since the 1990s, Kelly has been the subject of numerous allegations of sexual abuse and misconduct, often with underage girls all charges he categorically denies. In 2002 he was indicted on 13 counts of child pornography, but was acquitted of all charges in 2008. In January 2019, a widely viewed Lifetime doca series titled Surviving R. Kelly detailed allegations of sexual abuse by multiple women, allegations Kelly denies. Facing pressure from the public using the mute R. Kelly hashtag, RCA Records dropped Kelly. On February 22, 2019, Kelly was indicted on 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. On July 11, 2019, Kelly was arrested on federal charges alleging sex crimes and obstruction of justice. Kelly faces a total of 18 federal counts, including child pornography, kidnapping and forced labor, as of July 12, 2019. Early Life Robert Sylvester Kelly was born to Joanne Kelly on January 8, 1967, at Chicago Lying in Hospital in Hyde Park, Chicago. He is the third of four children with an older sister and brother and a younger brother. His mother was a professional singer, and raised her children in the Baptist church where she sang lead in the choir. Kelly has never met his father, who remains absent in his son's life. His family lived in the Ida B. Wells Homes public housing project in Chicago's Bronzeville neighborhood. Kelly's high school music teacher Lena McClin described Kelly's childhood home, it was bare. One table, two chairs. There was no father there, I knew that, and they had very little. Kelly began singing in the church choir at age eight. Kelly grew up in a house full of women, who he said would act differently when his mother and grandparents were not home. From age 8 to 14 Kelly was often sexually abused by a woman who was at least 10 years older than himself. I was too afraid and too ashamed, Kelly wrote in his 2012 autobiography Sola Coaster about why he never told anyone. During that time, at age 11, he was shot in the shoulder while riding his bike, the boy stole his bike while he lay bleeding on the sidewalk, the bullet is reportedly still lodged in his shoulder. Kelly was eight when he had his first girlfriend, Lulu. 
They would hold hands and eat make-believe meals inside their playhouse built from cardboard, where they vowed to be boyfriend and girlfriend forever. Kelly wrote in his autobiography that their last play date turned tragic when, after fighting with some older children over a play area by a creek, Lulu was pushed into the water. A fast-moving current swept her away while she screamed Rob, his childhood nickname. Shortly thereafter, her lifeless body was found downstream. Kelly calls Lulu his very first musical inspiration. Kelly was a street performer under the Chicago L tracks. Kelly entered Kenwood Academy in Chicago's Hyde Park neighborhood in the fall of 1981, where he met music teacher, Dr. Lena McLean, who encouraged Kelly to perform the Stevie Wonder classic Ribbon in the Sky in the high school talent show. A shy Kelly put on sunglasses, was escorted onto the stage, sang the song and won first prize. Dr. McLean had encouraged a young Kelly to leave the high school basketball team and concentrate on music. She said he was furious at first, but after his performance in the talent show, he changed his mind. McLean remains Kelly's voice coach and spiritual advisor. Kelly played basketball with the late Illinois state champion basketball player Ben Wilson and sang It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday at Wilson's Funeral. An undiagnosed and untreated learning disability, believed to be dyslexia, left Kelly unable to read or write. He dropped out of high school and as a teenager, Kelly began street performing under the Chicago Transportation Authority L tracks and eventually formed a group with friends Mark McWilliams, Vincent Walker, and Sean Brooks. In 1989, they formed the group MGM, Musically Gifted Men. In 1990, MGM recorded and released one single Why You Wanna Play Me, after its release the group disbanded. In 1991, Kelly signed with Jive Records and teamed with a new group from Chicago called Public Announcement. Kelly was extremely close to his mother Joanne, who took him with her to church in a local club where she performed. She died from cancer in 1993. He would later name his eldest daughter after her. Career 1992-1996, born into the 90s, 12 Play and R. Kelly R. Kelly gained national recognition in 1989 when he, along with Mark McWilliams, Vincent Walker, and Sean Brooks, participated on the talent TV show Big Break, hosted by Natalie Cole. Kelly went on to win the $100,000 grand prize. Subsequently, Kelly's debut album Born into the 90s was released in early 1992, credited as R. Kelly and Public Announcement. Released during the New Jack Swing period of the early 1990s, the album yielded the R and Amp, B hits She's Got That Vibe, Honey Love, Dedicated, and Slow Dance, Hey Mr. DJ, with Kelly singing lead vocals. During late 1992, Kelly and Public Announcement embarked on a tour entitled 60,653 after the zip code of their Chicago neighborhood. This would be the only album CO credited with public announcement. Kelly separated from the group in January 1993. MW parser output. Quote box. Float left. MW parser output. Quote box. Float right. MW parser output. Quote box. Centered. MW parser output. Quote box. Float left. P. MW parser output. Quote box. Float right. P. MW parser output. Quote box. Title. MW parser output. Quote box. Quote dot quoted before dot mw parser output dot quote box quote dot quoted after dot mw parser output dot quote box dot left aligned dot mw parser output dot quote box dot right aligned dot mw parser output dot quote box dot center aligned dot mw parser output dot quote box site at media screen end max with 360 px i didn't really know if the album would be as successful as it has been but i hoped that it would I was really taking a chance with the concept of this album. Kelly on 12 Play, 1994 Kelly's first solo album, 12 Play, was released on November 9, 1993, and yielded the singer's first number one hit, Bump and Grind, which spent a record-breaking 12 weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot R&Amp, B Singles Chart. Subsequent hit singles, Your Body's Callan, US Hot 100, Number 13, USR and Amp, 
B, number 2, and Sex Me, US Hot 100, number 20, US R and Amp, B, number 8. Both singles sold 500,000 copies in the United States and were certified gold by the RIAA. In 1994, 12 Play was certified gold by the RIAA, eventually going six times platinum. Following the success of 12 Play, Kelly was in demand as a songwriter and producer. On May 24, 1994, Kelly's protege Aaliyah released her debut album titled Age Ain't Nothing But a Number which was entirely written and produced by R. Kelly. The album peaked at number 18 on the Billboard 200 and sold over 3 million copies in the United States. Age Ain't Nothing But a Number spawned two hit singles, Back and Amp, 4th, US Hot 100, number 5, US R and Amp, B, number 1, blocked Kelly's Your Body's Callan from the top spot and at your best, You Are Love, US Hot 100, number 6, US R and Amp, B, number 2. Kelly also wrote and produced the female R and Amp, B duo Changing Faces's first two hit singles, Stroke You Up, US Hot 100, number 3, US R and Amp, B, number 2, and Full In Around, US R and Amp, B, number 9. During this time, Kelly also became known for his remixes. He remixed his own songs, Bump and Grind, Sex Me and Homie Lover Friend, a remix featured on the A Low Down Dirty Shame, soundtrack, along with Aaliyah's song, The Thing I Like which was written and produced by Kelly. He remixed songs for other artists including Aaliyah, Barry White, and Tony Braxton. He produced the remix for Janet Jackson's 1994 hit Anytime, Any Place which was featured on Jackson's remix album, Janet Remixed. In 1995, Kelly garnered his first Grammy nominations, two for writing, producing and composing Michael Jackson's last number one hit You Are Not Alone. On November 14, 1995, Kelly's success continued with the release of R. Kelly, his eponymous second studio album. Critics praised him for his departure from salacious bedroom songs to embracing vulnerability. New York Times contributor Stephen Holden described Kelly as the reigning king of pop soul sex talks a lot tougher than Barry White, the father of such fluffed-up pillow talk and along with Marvin Gaye and Donny Hathaway, major influences for Kelly. Also in December 1995, Professor Michael Eric Dyson critiqued Kelly's self-titled album R. Kelly for Vibe. Dyson described Kelly's growth from the 12 Play album, Kelly reshapes his personal turmoil to artistic benefit and noted that Kelly is reborn before our very own ears. The album reached number one on the Billboard 200 chart, becoming Kelly's first number one album on the chart, and reached number one on the R and Amp, B album charts, his second. The R. Kelly album spawned three platinum hit singles, You Remind Me of Something, US Hot 100, Number 4, US R and Amp, B, Number 1, I Can't Sleep, Baby If I, US Hot 100, Number 5, US R and Amp, B, Number 1, and Down Low, Nobody Has to Know, US Hot 100, Number 4, US R and Amp, B, Number 1, a duet with Ronald Isley. Kelly's self-titled album sold 4 million copies, receiving 4 platinum certification from the RIAA. Kelly promoted the album with a 50-city down-low top-secret tour with LL Cool J, Scape, and Solo. On November 26, 1996, Kelly released I Believe I Can Fly, an inspirational song originally released on the soundtrack for the film Space J.A.M. I Believe I Can Fly reached number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100, and number 1 on the UK charts for three weeks and won three Grammy Awards in 1998. In 2004 the song was ranked number 406 on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. 1997-2001 Basketball, R, and TP-2.com. In 1997, Kelly signed a contract to play professional basketball with the Atlantic City Seagulls of the USBL. Kelly wore the number 12 in honor of his album 12 Play. Kelly said I love basketball enough to not totally let go of my music, 
but just put it to the side for a minute and fulfill some dreams of mine that I've had for a long time. Kelly's USBL contract contained a clause that would allow him to fulfill a music obligation when necessary. If Whitney Houston needs a song written, said Ken Gross, the Seagulls owner who signed Kelly, he would be able to leave the team to do that and come back. It wasn't a gimmick, Gross continued, he's a ball player. He can play. Kelly is the first music artist to play professional basketball. In 1998, Kelly wrote and produced the debut album of another protege Sparkle, which was released under his Rockland label and distributed through Interscope. In 2000, Sparkle went platinum due in part to the success of the first single, Be Careful, a duet with R. Kelly. Since the success of Space Jam S I Believe I Can Fly, Kelly gained further fame for penning songs for popular soundtracks including Batman and Amp, Robin, Gotham City, and Life, Fortunate. On November 17, 1998, Kelly released his fourth studio and first double album, R Musically. The album spans different genres from pop, Celine Dion, street rap, NAS and Jay-Z, to blues, suicide. Dave Hoekstra of the Los Angeles Times described the album as easily the most ambitious project of his career. R is the first album on which Kelly worked with other record producers and collaborated with various artists. The album remains Kelly's highest-selling album to date selling 8 million copies in the United States and 4 million copies internationally. R reached number one on the R and Amp, B Albums chart, becoming Kelly's third number one album and entered at number two on the Billboard 200 chart. It spawned Kelly's second number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100, I'm Your Angel, a duet with Celine Dion and notable classics such as When a Woman's Fed Up, Hot R and Amp. B slash hip hop, number 5, and if I could turn back the hands of time, hot 100, number 12, UK, number 2. The album also contains Kelly's international hit, I Believe I Can Fly, which he had released two years prior on the Space Jam soundtrack. In 1999, Kelly wrote and produced, along with contributions from Wyclef Jean, the majority of the soundtrack to the Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence comedy film Life. As the year 2000 commenced, Kelly racked up a slew of new awards reflecting his status as an established R and Amp, B superstar. In January 2000, Kelly had won favorite male soul slash R and Amp, B artist at the American Music Awards and, in February, was nominated for several Grammy Awards, including Best Male R and Amp. B. Vocal Performance, When a Woman's Fed Up, Best R and Amp, B. Album, R, and Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group, Satisfy You, with P. Diddy. On November 7, 2000, Kelly released his fifth studio album TP-2.com, a project harking back to his breakthrough album, 12 Play. Unlike Kelly's previous effort, R. All songs on tp-2.com was written, arranged, and produced entirely by Kelly. All Music S. Jason Birchmeyer gave tp-2.com four stars and described Kelly's style, Kelly knows how to take proven formulas and funnel them through his own stylistic aesthetic, which usually means slowing down the tempo, laying on lush choruses of strings and background vocals, taming down the lyrics for radio, and catering his pitch primarily to wistful women. The album was Kelly's second album to peak at number one on the Billboard 200 and the fourth to top the R&Amp, B slash hip hop albums charts. TP-2.com yielded the hits I Wish, US Hot 100, number 14, US R&Amp, B, number one, Feelin' on Yo Booty, US R&Amp, B, number nine, and the remix to Fiesta, US Hot 100, number six, US R&Amp, B, number 1, which featured Jay-Z. In 2001, Kelly won the Outstanding Achievement Award at the Music of Black Origin or MOBO Awards and Billboard magazine ranked TP-2.com number 94 on the magazine's top 200 albums of the decade. 2002-2003, The Best of Both Worlds and Chocolate Factory. The World's Greatest, from the Alley soundtrack, was a hit and Kelly performed at the opening ceremonies of the 2000 World Cup. 
In 2001, Kelly began discussing the possibility of a joint album with Jay-Z after the positive reception of Jay-Z's Guilty Until Proven Innocent, which featured Kelly and the remix to Fiesta which featured Jay-Z. In December 2001 at the Billboard Music Awards, Kelly confirmed the album's existence and announced the title of the album, The Best of Both Worlds. During this time, Kelly began working on the follow-up to his fifth studio album TP-2.com, titled Loveland. On January 24, 2002, at the press conference announcing the best of both worlds completion, celebrities such as Johnny Cochran, Russell Simmons, Luther Vandross and Sean Combs lined up to praise the album, with Jay-Z stating that he hoped the collaboration represents more unity for black people on a whole. Black Electorate described the collaboration as one of the greatest power moves in black music history. MTV's Shahi M. Reid wrote, and if Jay and Kelly can put their egos to the side long enough to wrap up and promote their album, then their labels Def Jam and Jive, respectively can surely figure out a way to join forces and make Cheddar together. As determined by a coin toss, the album will be distributed on Rock Fella slash Def Jam in the US and Canada while Jive will handle distribution internationally. When the joint album leaked on February 22, 2002, it caused the label, Rock A Fella, to push the album's release date up from March 26 to March 19. Jay-Z expressed his frustration about the album leak to MTV News, It's the gift and the curse. It's an honor that everybody wants your music fast, but on the other hand, it's another thing when the music gets out before you. Because that's your art. You feel attached to it. You feel a certain way and you want people to go out and support it. The time that you take, it's like a piece of your life. You take parts of your life and you put it on these records and then for it to just be traded and moved around. The release date for the best of both worlds was eventually moved back to the planned date, March 26. The album sold 285,000 copies in its opening week and debuted at number 2 on the Billboard 200. In May 2002, Kelly's initial sixth studio album, Loveland, leaked and was delayed to release in November. Instead Kelly re-recorded the entire album, retitled it Chocolate Factory and featured several of the bootleg tracks on the bonus Loveland disc. In early 2003, Chocolate Factory became a runaway success for Kelly, selling over 3 million copies due to the success of Singles Ignition. Snake and Step in the Name of Love Snake, incidentally, became the basis of the dancehall reggae rhythm known as Baghdad. Later that year Kelly followed that success by releasing his first greatest hits collection The R&R and Amp, B Collection Vol. 1, an album as well as a DVD collection. 2004-2005, Happy People Slash You Saved Me and TP.3 Reloaded. This section needs additional citations for verification. Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources. Unsourced material may be challenged and removed. Find sources, and NBSP, R. Kelly and NBSP, and NBSP, News and NBSP, Newspapers and NBSP. Books and NBSP, Scholar and NBSP, Jaster, March 2019, Learn how and when to remove this template message. In 2004, Kelly released the two-disc set Happy People Slash You Saved Me, with the first disc including Feel Good, Stepping Inspired Tracks, while focusing on gospel and inspirational material on the second disc. That same year, Kelly performed the Star Spangled Banner during the introduction of the World Championship boxing fight between Bernard Hopkins and Jermaine Taylor. His performance, which included a line of dancers doing the stepping routine and a pre-recorded instrumental track set to the sound of Happy People was met with a mixed reaction. In October 2004, Kelly reunited with Jay-Z to do a follow-up to their Best of Both Worlds album shortly after announcing a tour to coincide with the project after the duo performed at Madison Square Garden a year before. The duo's unfinished business album was released and peaked at number one on the Billboard chart. The unfinished business tour was plagued by a rivalry between the two stars and Kelly reportedly showing up late or not at all to gigs. The singer, according to Jay-Z, 
often complained that the Turing lights were not directed towards him and often left during the middle of sets. Another night during the concert, Kelly stayed on his tour bus for two hours before finally coming out to perform an uninspired set. Jay-Z eventually removed R. Kelly halfway through the tour, after a member of Jay-Z's entourage attacked R. Kelly with mace or pepper spray. On April 25, 2006, it was confirmed that Jay-Z's younger cousin, Tyron, Ty Ty, Smith confessed in a Manhattan criminal court to pepper spraying R. Kelly and four of his bodyguards at Madison Square Garden in October 2004. Smith had been charged with assault, but was allowed to plead guilty to disorderly conduct for four days of community service. After the original incident, Jay-Z made Smith an executive of Def Jam Records. Kelly also launched a $75 million lawsuit against Jay-Z for removing him from the tour, which received a countersuit by Jay-Z which was thrown out by the judge. In 2005, Kelly released his seventh studio LP, TP.3 Reloaded. The album included chapters of Trapped in the Closet. 2006-2008, Double Up, Studio Work and I Believe. On 2006, Kelly started the Light It Up tour, which later became his first concert DVD. On May 29, 2007, Kelly released his eighth studio album Double Up, which included the hit single I'm a Flirt, remix, featuring T.I. and T-Pain. The original track entitled I'm a Flirt, also produced and co-written by R. Kelly, appeared as a hidden track on Bow Wow's The Price of Fame, 2006. However, Kelly never gave the rights for the song to be released as a formal single, although it was played by many radio stations before the remix version. Kelly's first single from Double Up was I'm a Flirt, remix, Bow Wow was not featured on this version of the song. In Kelly's video for I'm a Flirt, remix, he encourages fans to call a number which flashes up quickly on the screen. Fans who called the number were greeted by a recording of Kelly talking about his upcoming album and playing snippets of new songs in the studio. I'm a Flirt, remix, was successful for Kelly. The song peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. It also reached number 1 on the Billboard Hot Rap tracks. Another hit on the album, Same Girl, was a collaboration between Kelly and Usher. The single peaked at number 20 on the Hot 100 and at number 4 on the R&Amp, B chart. Other singles including Rockstar featuring Ludacris and Kid Rock, Sex Planet and Freaky in the Club were R&Amp, B charters, although the latter two were not officially released as singles, nor was the title track featuring Snoop Dogg. Kelly's other single from Double Up titled Rise Up was a tribute to the victims of the Virginia Tech Massacre. The song was officially released as a digital download May 15, 2007. Proceeds were donated to the Hokie Spirit Memorial Fund, a fund that helped family members of the victims of the shootings. Kelly began his double up tour with Nayo, Keisha Cole and Jay Holiday opening for him. After two shows, promoter Leonard Rowe had Nayo removed from the tour because of a contract dispute. However, Nayo alleges that the reason for the dropout was because Nayo believes he received a better response from critics and fans, even though he only performed at two shows. Nayo filed a lawsuit against Row Entertainment. Kelly was not mentioned in the lawsuit. In December 2007, Kelly failed to appear at another preliminary court hearing on his case due to his tour bus being held up in Utah. The judge threatened to revoke Kelly's bond, but eventually decided against it. In 2008, Kelly released a rap track titled I'm a Beast in which he coarsely attacked his detractors, though Kelly himself never mentioned by name the subjects for the song. In 2008, Billboard reported that Kelly had plans to release his newest album titled 12 Play, fourth quarter in the summer of that year but the album was postponed. Billboard also named Kelly among the most successful artists ever for its 50th anniversary list. In the spring, the first promotional single Hair Braider, peaked at number 56 on Billboard's R&Amp, B chart. On July 28, the entire album leaked online. The album was then pushed back to be released in the fall. On September 18, Kelly released the video to the second promotional single Skin. However, 
the album still has no official release date. Though Kelly had not released an album, he kept busy in the studio doing featured guest spots on numerous remixes including Lookin' Boy Remix by Hot Stultz, Mariah Carey's Touch My Body Remix, a verse for a remix to Kanye West's single Love Lockdown, Raheem Devon's Customer Remix, Beyoncé If I Were a Boy Remix, T-Pain's Chopped and Screwed Remix, among others. Again in 2009 a track entitled I Believe was leaked online. Kelly wrote that fellow Chicagone Barack Obama's presidential election inspired him to write the song, which contains an excerpt from Obama's first inaugural speech. The song was made available on iTunes as a free download during the first week it was released. 2009, Untitled, Africa and Sola Coaster In January 2009, after separating in the fall of 2005, Kelly and his wife Andrea Kelly finalized their divorce. The couple were married for 11 years. On June 3, Kelly released his first ever mixtape, the demo tape, Gangsta Grills, presented by DJ Ski and DJ Drama as a way to reintroduce himself to fans. While at the Velvet Room in Atlanta in February 2009, Kelly announced that he was out there working on a new album and that it would be called Untitled. The album was given a September 29th release date, but was delayed until October 13, 2009. The album release delayed a second time and was released under Jive Records on December 1, 2009. It received mixed to positive reviews from critics. The single number one, featuring Carrie Hilson, peaked at number eight on the US R and Amp. B chart. Kelly performed for the first time in Africa headlining the Arise African Fashion Awards in Johannesburg, South Africa on June 20, 2009. Kelly performed in Cape Town before heading to Nigeria as part of the annual This Day Music and Fashion Festival in July. Kelly also performed in Kampala, Uganda in January 2010. He was scheduled to perform in London as part of his first international tour in eight years but he did not make his London concert. I'm very excited about my first visit to Africa, I've dreamed about this for a long time and it's finally here, Kelly said in a statement. It will be one of the highlights of not only my career but my life. I can't wait to perform in front of my fans in Africa who have been some of the best in the world. In December 2009, Kelly teamed up with biographer David Ritz and Tavis Smiley's Smiley Books Publications to write his memoirs entitled Sola Coaster. Smiley Books publisher and founder, Tavis Smiley stated that the memoir's main focus would not be about Kelly's trials and tribulations. Smiley was quoted saying if anyone thinks this book is going to fixate on, they are going to be sadly mistaken. It is going to be a holistic look at his life thus far and the life and legacy that he's building. 2010, Epic and Love Letter Kelly performed the song Sign of a Victory at the 2010 FIFA World Cup opening ceremony on June 11, 2010. In an interview in the September 2010 issue of XXL magazine, Kelly mentioned that he is currently working on three new albums, Epic, Love Letter, and Zodiac, and detailed that the new material is basically him remixing himself. On September 13, 2010, Kelly released one of his three new albums, Epic. A collection of Kelly's most epic ballads, including five brand new inspirational songs, the compilation was only released in Europe. In the September 2010 issue of XXL magazine, Kelly mentioned that the song Sign of a Victory gave him the idea to do an international album called Epic. In November 2010, Kelly collaborated with several African musicians forming a supergroup known as ONE8. The group features 2FACE from Nigeria, Ali Kaiba from Tanzania, Congolese singer Fali Ipupa, 4X4 from Ghana, hip-hop artist Mova Ishailene from Gabon, Zambia's JK, Ugandan hip-hop star Navio and Kenya's Amini, the only female in the group. The first release from the group is Hands Across the World written and produced by Kelly. Kelly's 10th album Love Letter was released on December 14, 2010, worldwide. The album includes 15 songs, the latter being a bonus track, a cover of Michael Jackson's You Are Not Alone, which was written and produced by Kelly as well. 
Love Letter has been highly praised by music critics. ABC News declared the genius of R. Kelly has been resurrected and is on full display on Love Letter. The first single When a Woman Loves was nominated for a Grammy for Best Traditional R&Amp, B Vocal Performance at the 53rd Annual Grammy Awards. ABC News music critic named When a Woman Loves the Best Single of 2010 saying, an absolutely stunning love song with a pitch-perfect vocal performance that will send chills down your spine for the right reasons. The next single, Love Letter and A Love Letter Christmas, the Christmas remix to Love Letter, were released as singles on November 22, 2010. In promotion of the Love Letter album he performed at the 2010 Soul Train Music Awards and on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. All songs on the album were written and produced by Kelly. 2011, Throat Surgery This article may lend undue weight to the throat surgery. Please help improve it by rewriting it in a balanced fashion that contextualizes different points of view. July 2019, Learn how and when to remove this template message. At the 2011 Pre-Grammy Gala in Los Angeles, Kelly performed a medley of hits including Happy People, When a Woman's Fed Up and Bump and Grind. Ann Powers of the Los Angeles Times wrote Kelly is a single-bound kind of leaper who dips into everything from soft porn to opera in his music. His supreme chutzpah, a quality he shares with Streisand, allows him to feel secure within pop's traditions while taking them wherever he pleases. He made Davis musical program, which at times got lost amid the chatter of the A-list crowd, come alive. It was all so simple then, an instant when one of pop's key traditional elements, that determination to wow, took on new dimension in the hands of an expert. In March 2011, Kelly was named the number one R&Amp, B artist of the last 25 years by Billboard. In his career Kelly has amassed 35 top 10 hits and 11 number one hits on the R&Amp, B slash hip hop songs chart. R. Kelly. Via Twitter. At Kelly. I'd like to thank everybody for their love, concern, and support. I will be back. July 20, 2011 On July 19, 2011, Kelly was rushed to the Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago to undergo emergency throat surgery. He cancelled his heavily advertised performance at the Reggae Sumfest in Jamaica that was scheduled the following Friday. In a statement the organizers said, Kelly's unforeseen and unavoidable health issues will prevent him from making a scheduled appearance on the music festival. Johnny Gorzone, Sumfest Productions executive director, also commented, saying, We are truly going to miss his presence on the festival. On July 20, 2011, in a press release, representatives for R. Kelly explained that he was rushed to the hospital to drain an abscess on one of his tonsils and will be laid up for an indefinite amount of time. Shortly after, Kelly tweeted fans I will be back, he promised and I'd like to thank everybody for their love, concern, and support. On July 21, 2011, Kelly's spokesman, Alan Mayer, reported that Kelly was released from Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago and is recuperating at home. It was not immediately clear when Kelly might be well enough to resume performing. On July 21, 2011, in a video message to fans, Kelly spoke out for the first time since throat surgery and reassured his fans that he's doing well. He said yo what's up, y'all, it's your boy Kells, fresh out the hospital. Just want to say thanks to my fans for supporting me. I want to say thanks to all the prayer warriors out there for supporting me. On September 23, 2011, Variety confirmed that Kelly has signed on to write original music for the Sparkle soundtrack. On April 25, 2011, director Salkim Akli was quoted saying, Hopefully, R. Kelly will come on and do some of the music for the film. His latest music sounds like it came from a time period. Here's a guy who can write about a woman being a jeep to I believe I can fly and he's an artist. Whether you like him or dislike him, I love artists and I know that he will just go deep into it and come up with something unique. On October 7, RCA Music Group announced it was disbanding Jive Records along with Arista Records and J Records. 
With the shutdown, Kelly, and all other artists previously signed to these three labels, will release his future material on the RCA Records brand. R. Kelly Via Twitter At Kelly It's been a long time coming but I finally feel a lot better about my throat since the surgery and this is the first song I wrote. November 10, 2011 On November 10, 2011, Kelly tweeted to fans It's been a long time coming but I finally feel a lot better about my throat since the surgery and this is the first song I wrote followed with Enjoy, and a link to a song titled Shut Up. In the song, Kelly addresses the people who doubted his ability to come back after the surgery and the rumors that surrounded him while he was in recovery. Reviews for Shut Up were generally positive, Spin Magazine said, Kelly taking aim at the haters who said he's washed up, he's lost it. He hasn't. Dude's voices in prime smooth R and amp, B form. Prefix, magazine, writer, Andrew Winisterfer described the song as Vintage Kelly, it's all runs in the verses, falsetto in the middle, and randomly placed vitriol. On December 21, 2011, Kelly made a live appearance on The X Factor and gave his first performance since undergoing emergency throat surgery in the summer. He sang his classic hit I Believe I Can Fly with finalist Melanie Amaro and received positive reviews from critics. Kelly revealed to Rolling Stone that he felt like he was just starting out and how the performance was a wake-up call for him. His memoir entitled Solar Coaster was released in the summer of 2012. 2012, Write Me Back and Trapped in the Closet Revival On January 31, 2012, Kelly revealed in a radio interview that he's releasing a follow-up to the Love Letter album titled Write Me Back. The album is a mix of Kelly's previous albums, Love Letter, Happy People, and a little bit of TP2. Commander on February 1, 2012, Kelly released the first single, Share My Love, Off Write Me Back, followed by Feelin' Single. The album will be released on June 26. On February 18, 2012, R. Kelly performed at Whitney Houston's Memorial. Kelly performed the ballad I Look to You, a song he wrote for Whitney that she released on July 23, 2009. The song was included in her seventh and final studio album, also titled I Look to You. After singing the song he said, We love you Whitney. Rest in peace before leaving the stage. On March 20, 2012, IFC announced a third installment of the Trapped in the Closet will be coming soon. The new chapters aired on IFC on Thanksgiving Day 2012. On June 26, 2012, Kelly released his 11th studio album, Write Me Back. On August 31, 2012, Kelly announced the single Ladies Tour featuring R and Amp, B singer, Tamiya. On September 1, 2012, the Japanese branch of retail chain HMV revealed Kanye West's Cruel Summer track list. Kelly is featured alongside Kanye West on the opening song entitled To the World. 2013-2015, Black Panties and the Buffet. During 2013, R. Kelly continued his The Single Ladies Tour. He also performed at a variety of music festivals across North America, including Bonnaroo, Pitchfork, and Macy's Music Festival. On June 30, 2013, R. Kelly performed live at Bed Awards show for the first time in many years, singing a medley of his hits as well as a snippet of his new track My Story featuring Atlanta rapper 2 Chains. This was followed by news that Kelly was releasing the song as the lead single for his upcoming 12th studio album Black Panties. The album itself was officially released on December 10, 2013. During this time, R. Kelly also collaborated with a variety of artists. He co wrote and is featured on Lady Gaga's song Do What You Want from her 2013 album Art Pop. R. Kelly performed his duet with Lady Gaga for the first time on Saturday Night Live on November 16, 2013. The two are also scheduled to perform the song Live Again at the 2013 American Music Awards. He also collaborated with Birdman and Lil Wayne on the Rich Gang album's second single and on Twista's first single on his new album Dark Horse. Music videos have been produced for both singles. 
At midnight on November 17, R. Kelly and Justin Bieber debuted their first collaboration entitled PYD. R. Kelly was also featured on the soundtrack album of the film The Best Man Holiday with his song Christmas, I'll Be Steppin'. On an interview with Global Grind on November 15, R. Kelly stated that he has a song that he is going to be servicing to Celine Dion and it could be their first song together after the number one single I'm Your Angel in 1998. He also confirmed that Trapped in the Closet is going to Broadway and that he's working on making movies and also more chapters for his hip hop era, telling his fans that they will see a lot going on for him in past two or three years and more. He is also working with singer Mariah Carey for her new upcoming album The Art of Letting Go. Kelly has been featured on a couple of remixes such as Gorilla, G-Mix, with Bruno Mars and Farrell, UOENO by Rocco, Trying to Be Cool with Phoenix, Clean This House by gospel singer Isaac Curry, Dirty Laundry by Kelly Rowland, and Represented by Ludacris featuring himself and Fabulous. In late 2013, R. Kelly announced with Wrap Up TV that he was planning to release the sequel to the album Black Panties for the summer of 2014, White Panties. He also added that he is finishing up a Christmas album for late 2014 called The Twelve Nights of Christmas. R. Kelly is also planning a tour with R. and Amp, B. singer Mary J. Bleach called The King and Amp, Queen Tour before doing the Black Panties tour later. He is also going to film and put out more chapter of his infamous hip hop era Trapped in the Closet. R. Kelly has also been recording different songs with Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, Mary J. Bleach, Jennifer Hudson on the track called It's Your World, and the rapper Scarface as a featured performer on tracks on each of their albums. He has only confirmed one collaboration for his upcoming Black Panties sequel, with pop singer Justin Bieber. Stepping away from his music, R. Kelly is planning to make his debut as a film director and producer sometime during 2014 or 2015 and also plans on taking his musical Trapped in the Closet to Broadway. In July 2014, Kelly announced at the Chosen Few DJs picnic in hometown Chicago that he's currently working on a house music album. I want y'all to know a secret, R. Kelly said. I'm working on a house album right now, and I want y'all to know it's coming. And y'all know, I love music and I feel like I can do anything when it comes to music because I am music just like y'all. On July 14, 2015, R. Kelly announced that The Buffet will be released September 25, 2015. However it was later pushed back to December 11, 2015. The album's first single Backyard Party was released August 21, 2015. The album's second single Switch Up was released November 5, 2015. 2016, 12 Nights of Christmas Originally slated to be released in late 2014, Kelly presented his first Christmas album, and 14th studio album, 12 Nights of Christmas, on October 21, 2016. Artistry Musical Style and Influences Kelly's music took root in R and Amp, B, hip hop, and soul. One of Kelly's earliest musical memories is listening to his mother, Joanne Kelly, sing. He and his mother used to play records by Donny Hathaway and Marvin Gaye, who became inspirations for young Robert. In reference to Hathaway, Kelly declared, A guy like Donny Hathaway had a focused, sexual texture in his voice that I always wanted in mine. He had smooth, soulful tones, but he was spiritual at the same time. Kelly was heavily influenced by Marvin Gaye's R and Amp, Below Therio Image. I had to make a baby make an album. If Marvin Gaye did it, I wanted to do it, Kelly said. Public announcement worked with Kelly during his debut at the tail end of the new Jack Swing era, as they managed to further sustain its sound. While Kelly has created a smooth, professional mixture of hip-hop beats, soulman crooning, and funk, from the beginning of his career the most distinctive element of his music is its explicit sensuality. Sex Me, Bump and Grind, Your Body's Callin, and Feelin' on Yo Booty are considered to be examples, as their productions were seductive enough to sell such blatant come-ons. Kelly's crossover appeal was also sustained by his development of a flair for pop balladry. 
vocal style and lyrical themes. Kelly's voice easily shifts from booming baritone to seductive alto. Love and sex are the topics of the majority of Kelly's lyrical content, although he has written about a wide variety of themes such as inspiration and spirituality. Kelly has said that he writes from everyday experiences and prides himself in being versatile. Larry Kahn, senior VP of Jive's Urban Marketing slash Promotion has said that Kelly's musical compass is second to none. Kelly never writes any lyrics down, he freestyles everything in the studio. He states, I never write anything down, since I've been in the songwriting business 20 years, I never write anything on paper, everything comes off the top of my head. I get in there, do the track, and whatever the track feels like, that's what I do. Rockland Records Main article, Rockland Records In 1998 Kelly launched his own label, the Interscope Records distributed Rockland Records. The label's roster included artists Sparkle, Boo and Amp, Gotti, Talent, Vegas Cats, Lady, Frankie, Secret Weapon, and Rebecca F. Also in 1998, the label's first artist, Sparkle released her debut self-titled album, Sparkle. In addition to producing and writing the project, Kelly made vocal contribution to the hit duet Be Careful, which contributed largely to the album's success. The album was certified platinum in December 2000. In 1999, Kelly wrote and produced the soundtrack to the Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy movie Life, which features tracks from KCI and Amp, Jojo, Maxwell, Maya, and Destiny's Child. The soundtrack was released on the Rockland label. Rockland artists Sparkle, Talent, and Vegas Cats all appeared on the Life soundtrack. Boo and Amp, Gotti and Vegas Cats appeared on R. Kelly's albums, R and TP-2.com, as well as a freestyle from Boo and Amp, Gotti on the Fast and the Furious soundtrack, making several references to Rockland. The label is currently inactive but Kelly still owns the Rockland Records imprint. Controversies Illegal Marriage According to Vibe and the Chicago Sun-Times, 27-year-old Kelly and 15-year-old protege Aaliyah were illegally married in a secret ceremony on August 31, 1994, in Cook County. Upon meeting Kelly and prior to the nuptials, Aaliyah admitted she had falsely stated she was 18. In a 2008 interview, Kelly's tour manager, Demetrius Smith, said that he facilitated the wedding by obtaining falsified identification for Aaliyah which listed her as 18 years of age. Kelly had been introduced to Aaliyah by her uncle, Barry Hankerson, just three years prior when she was 12 years old. The marriage was annulled in February 1995 at the behest of Aaliyah's family by a Michigan judge. Kelly and Aaliyah, however, both denied that the marriage occurred and even denied that their relationship had ever moved beyond friendship. Despite denials of marriage, in May 1997 Aaliyah filed a lawsuit in Cook County to have her existing marriage records expunged, claiming that she was underage at the time of marriage and lied by signing the marriage certificate as an 18-year-old, and that she could not legally enter into marriage without parental consent. The expungement request was in the middle of a lawsuit filed by Tiffany Hawkins, who was seeking to use the marriage documents in her case against Kelly. Hawkins later accepted a settlement of $250,000 from Kelly, subject to a confidentiality agreement, in 1998. Allegations of Child Pornography and Abuse Kelly's Miami Booking Photo R. Kelly was charged with child pornography but none of these charges resulted in convictions. On February 3, 2002, a video surfaced allegedly showing Kelly engaging in sex with and urinating on, an underage girl. The story, which was released by an unknown source, was sent to the Chicago Sun-Times, the newspaper that broke the story on February 8, 2002. This news surfaced as Kelly was to perform at the opening ceremony of the 2002 Winter Olympics. Kelly said in interviews that he was not the man in the video. In June 2002, Kelly was indicted in Chicago on 21 counts of child pornography. That same month, Kelly was apprehended by Miami Police Department on a Chicago arrest warrant. The alleged victim refused to testify at the trial, 
and a Chicago jury found Kelly not guilty of 14 out of 14 counts of child pornography in June, 2008. Prosecutors specified the same alleged victim in new charges filed in 2019. While investigating the photographs reported in the Chicago Sun-Times, Polk County Sheriff's Office conducted a search of Kelly's residence in Davenport, Florida. During the search, officers recovered 12 images of an alleged underage girl on a digital camera and NBSP, wrapped in a towel in a duffel bag which allegedly depicted Kelly involved in sexual conduct with the female minor. According to the Chicago Sun-Times, the girl in the images obtained from Kelly's Florida home also appears in the videotape which got Kelly indicted in Chicago. Kelly was arrested in January 2003 on those charges. In March 2004, these charges were dropped due to a lack of probable cause for the search warrants. Alleged Sex Cult Jim Derogatis reported for BuzzFeed News on July 17, 2017, that Kelly was accused by three sets of parents of holding their daughters in an abusive cult. Kelly and the alleged victims deny the allegations. In March 2018 the BBC aired in the UK a documentary entitled R. Kelly, Sex, Girls and Videotape presented by reporter Ben Zand explored the 2017 allegations. This was followed up in May with the documentary R. Kelly, The Sex Scandal Continues which included interviews with the parents of the Savage Daughters. Kelly was again accused of misconduct on April 17, 2018 by a former partner of his who claimed that Kelly intentionally infected her with a sexually transmitted disease. A representative for Kelly stated that he categorically denies all claims and allegations. In a January 2019 BBC News article, a woman named Asante McGee whom Kelly had met in 2014 and taken to live with him some months later said that she lived with not only Kelly alone, but with other women. She said, he controlled every aspect of my life, while I lived with him. McGee later moved out on her own accord. Boycott and industry response In May 2018, the Women of Color branch of the Time's Up movement called for a boycott of Kelly's music and performances over the many allegations against him. The boycott was accompanied by a social media campaign called Mute R. Kelly. In response, his management said that Kelly supports the movement in principle, but targeting him was the attempted lynching of a black man who has made extraordinary contributions to our culture. The music streaming service Spotify announced on May 10 that it was going to stop promoting or recommending music by both R. Kelly and XXXTentacion. Spotify stated, We don't censor content because of an artist's or creator's behavior, but we want our editorial decisions what we choose to program to reflect our values. Two days later, Apple Music and Pandora also announced that they will no longer be featuring or promoting R. Kelly's music. Spotify received criticism from members of the music industry who expressed worries of a slippery slope of muting artists, since R. Kelly had not ever actually been convicted of any crime. Spotify ultimately reversed this decision. Allegations of Music Industry Complicity the Washington Post ran a lengthy article in May 2018 alleging that music industry executives had been aware of Kelly's sexually abusive behavior toward young women for years but did little or nothing about them due to his success as a performer and songwriter. As early as 1994, the newspaper reported, his tour manager had urged Jive Records founder Clive Calder to tell Kelly he would not release the singer's records if he continued to have incidents with women after every concert he gave. Calder told the Post that he regretted not having done more at the time, saying clearly, we missed something. Former Jive president Barry Weiss told the newspaper that during 20 years with the label he never concerned himself with Kelly's private life and was unaware of two lawsuits filed against Kelly and the label by women alleging sexual misconduct, suits in which the label had successfully argued it was not liable. Larry Kahn another Jive executive who worked closely with the singer even after viewing the sex tape, likewise implied it was not the label's responsibility, and pointed to Chuck Berry and Jerry Lee Lewis as musicians whose labels continued to release and promote their records despite public awareness that they were involved with young women. Executives at Epic Records also took a similarly relaxed attitude towards allegations of Kelly's sexual misconduct, the Post claimed. In 2002, 
after he signed with the label, executive David McPherson allegedly avoided viewing a copy of a tape purportedly showing the singer having sex with an underage girl, even as he had warned Kelly's assistant that if it turned out to be Kelly on that tape, the label would drop him. McPherson did not respond to the Post's requests for comment. An intern with the label whose work suffered after she began a relationship with Kelly, ultimately costing her the position, settled with Epic for $250,000, Kathy Carroll, the executive she worked for, regularly rebuked her former subordinate for having an affair with a married man whenever the two met at social functions for years afterwards, and the damage to the woman's reputation led her to abandon her career in the music industry. Carol told the newspaper the woman was starstruck. A lot of times it's not really the men. The Washington Post also suggested the labels were complicit in the sex cult allegations from the previous summer's BuzzFeed piece. Employees at the studios where Kelly recorded were required to sign non-disclosure agreements and not enter certain rooms, which they said they believed were where Kelly made the women stay while he worked. Despite the agreements, the newspaper was able to publish screenshots of text exchanges where women in the rooms asked Kelly's assistants to let them out so they could go to the bathroom or get food. The newspaper also published pictures taken after Kelly had concluded a six-week session at a Los Angeles studio, paid for by his then-current label, RCA Records, showing a cup of urine sitting on a piano and urine stains on the wooden floor of another room. Musical Response to Allegations Main Article I Admit, R. Kelly Song Kelly released the 19-minute-long I Admit on SoundCloud on July 23, 2018, as a response to his accusers. The song does not contain any criminal admissions despite its title and chorus, which repeats the lyric I Admit It, I Did It. In I Admit, Kelly denies allegations of domestic violence and pedophilia, asserting that they are matters of opinion. Kelly also denounces Jim Derogatis and repudiates his investigative report's claim of Kelly operating a sex cult. Addressing the Mute R. Kelly social media campaign, Kelly sings, Only God Can Mute Me. The song was criticized by reviewers, who described it as an act of trolling. Andrea Kelly and Carrie Killa Kelly, R. Kelly's ex-wife and brother, responded to I Admit with a remix and a diss track. Surviving R. Kelly Main article, Surviving R. Kelly In January 2019, Lifetime began airing a six-part documentary series detailing sexual abuse and misconduct allegations against Kelly. According to a report by TMZ, Kelly plans to take legal action against the creators of the series and Lifetime. Within two weeks, Kelly launched a Facebook page where he sought to discredit the accusers who appeared in the DOCA series. Facebook removed the page for violating their standards. It appeared to contain personal contact information for his accusers. Alleged Sexual Abuse of Minors On February 22, 2019, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office in Illinois charged Kelly with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. The charges allege that from 1998 to 2000,